Guess who has work from home data entry jobs? This girl. So today we're gonna talk about all of the data entry jobs that we have. A lot of you are just getting back into the workforce. You've got gaps in your resume. So I wanted to show you exactly what your resume needs to look like. So yes, we are absolutely going to do a resume demonstration. I'm gonna show you exactly what needs to be put on your resume to make sure that you beat the applicant track system, you know, that's that system that searches keywords on your resume. And that's a lot of the reason why you don't get a call back because a lot of you don't have the right keywords on your resume. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to also get into some additional bonus jobs. So let's go ahead and look at the first opportunity. The first opportunity is US Bank. And yes, I'm going to show you what to put on your resume. Now, before I show you that, I got to do a super duper quick shout out because a lot of you all have been getting these jobs. And I just wanted to shout out the people that have already used the templates um, for their resumes. They've already used the interview kit that I provide on paypomp.com. So um, Nina actually got a job with US Bank not long ago. I, she says, uh, I got a job offer Thursday with US Bank after three months of searching. I used your interview tips and the one about the magic wand did the trick. Thanks for all you do. Congratulations to you. Y'all are getting jobs from everywhere. Like when I tell you Sedgwick is a place I've had people that use my templates, they got callbacks from Google, from YouTube, United Healthcare, uh, eBay. We got people getting hired at Allstate. We got people getting paid $33 an hour working at Target. So y'all have just been out here crushing it. Mr. Billy got a job at Toyota. Y'all are crushing it with these resume templates. I love it. I love it. I love it. Y'all just make me so happy. Amazon's in the house. So listen, oh, Delta Airlines. Oh my gosh. Who would have thought Delta Airlines had a remote job? So let's go ahead and get into what you need to put on your resume. Now, this job that we're going to look at, this is a case processor job. Now ignore where it says um, you have to work in Minnesota, because if you read down here, it says this role is a remote anywhere role. Okay. Anywhere in the United States. Okay. So I'm talking to you, California, you, New York, um, you know, all those other states that sometimes are funny about remote work. So it says this particular position is an entry level position. So if you are a new mom, maybe you're getting back into the workforce. Maybe you took some time off. This is going to be an entry level friendly position, even if you don't have the experience. Okay. If you're very new to the workforce, that's fine because I am going to show you how to hack your job application. So let's read the job description so we understand what this job is about. So it says, this position is responsible for researching and investigating cases um, related to missing ATM deposits and cash withdrawal transactions. Now, yes, this is a remote position, but people do sometimes have to report crazy things like maybe an ATM deposit hasn't posted to their account. Um, you know, or maybe they made a cash deposit and they're like, oh, that never posted. So it says we're looking for someone to um, do things like managing the dispute fraud caseload. Okay. We've all at some point had to file a dispute um, or some sort of claim. So someone with strong attention to detail um, and good organizational skills. Again, U.S. Bank is going to train you on everything that you need to know. So don't feel intimidated about this job. So let's go ahead and get into the resume part of this so we can get you hired. Okay. So I haven't done a resume demonstration in forever. So I'm really excited about this because a bunch of you have been asking me about this. Like it wasn't long ago that I was working for Waffle House. And when I worked for Waffle House, I literally made two thirteen an hour, but I like took some resume training and I had a mentor and they basically showed me exactly what to put on my resume and how to you know, articulate my skill set so that I could get a higher paying job. So I went from making 213 to making over $50,000 in my next job. And I did that like within a week, like it only took a week to do that. So let's talk about what should be under your professional summary. Again, this is a summary, only display what's relevant to the job. You can either type this or put it in paragraph form 
For a professional summary, I like to do a very short paragraph. So when it relates to this job, here's an example of what I put from my professional summary. I would put that I am an experienced customer service leader with five years of experience in customer service, data entry, service level agreements, or whatever. I'm excited to bring my technical skills and passion to the customers at U.S. Bank. And we're also going to put the name of the role because that helps us get past that ATS, which is the applicant tracking system. And if you don't have certain words on your resume, you won't get callbacks because the applicant tracking system is used to search for words within a resume. So the name of this role is going to be case processor. So we want to make sure that we have the title of that role in our resume. Now, you may be saying, Jazzy, I don't know which hot words to put and I don't know where to put them. Well, in this additional knowledge area, this is where we're gonna talk about any skill sets that we have, okay? And let me remind you, remote is not a skill set, okay? It is a, a destination for where one can work. That is not a skill set. So if you've never worked remotely before, it's okay. Now let's look at the actual job description to really put into perspective what things we should be listing on our resume, okay? So it says you're gonna work on the retail side of missing ATM deposits. Well, if we were gonna put something similar to that, we might want to list out on our resume. Let's see how we want to word this. Mm, they talked about missing ATM deposits and then they also talked about frauds and disputes. So let's talk, let's just put fraud dispute. If that is a skill set that you have, you've worked at a bank, then that needs to be on your resume. You ever supported um, disputes? Um, yeah, fraud disputes. The S. Let's say you work for Walmart and maybe you didn't actually handle the, the disputes, but you had to submit the information if a dispute came in. Maybe you were a customer service manager, so you had to help um, submit some information to show that the transaction, the transaction was not fraudulent. You say, hey, this person actually pulled out their ID. They showed their ID, so this is not a fraudulent transaction. Okay, so you wanna definitely put that you have experience in fraud disputes, okay? Something else from the job description that you want to put is going to be, they talked about ATM, okay? ATM claims. You can put ATM and debit claims, right? Those were words from the actual job description. Remember, ATM deposits and cash withdrawal transactions. We wanna make sure we get those big words put in there. We've got dispute and fraud in there. What else can we add? Remember, we always wanna have eight to 10 hot words. So we got already one, two, three, four hot words. And if we count this one, that's like five, six hot words, but we're just only gonna count these four down here. All right, so we've got those already. What else can we add? Well, let's see what the job description says. The job description talks about investigating, documenting, and resolving claims. Can we put the word claims in there? Yes, we can. That's why we added ATM and debit claims. Even if you've never done this on the retail side, you've done it as a consumer. You have experience in debit claims already. See how that works? You're not lying about it. You actually, that's very important to have consumer experience. You're familiar with filing claims. So we want to make sure we have that on there. Okay. Another word that we could add is going to be this word that's kind of buried, SLAs, which stands for service level agreements, okay? Service level agreements is going to be huge in the banking space, especially for this job. Now, again, this is just a sample resume. Uh, my, my resumes that are in your portal right now, they're fully filled out. They don't have like all of this, this uh, extra jargon on it. They are fully filled out. They're straight to the point. They've already got all of this stuff. It's already filled out. So this is in your portal. If you're not signed up, go to paybump.com so you can get these resumes, okay?
So what else can we add? Because remember, we want to have at least eight hot words out here. Another word that we might want to put is compliance. Listen, whether you worked at McDonald's, whether you worked at T-Mobile, compliance is something that you had to make sure that you were following, okay? Um, We all had to stay in compliance. We all had to follow some sort of federal regulations, whether it was Reg E, it could have been OSHA regulations for those of you that, you know, work in any type of food industry. Um, So we all pretty much... Uh, food or safety, sorry. Um, We all pretty much have had to follow federal regulations of some sort. So guess what? We're going to put that Okay, federal regulations. Another big word is going to be compliance. Okay. We only need three more to make our resume stand out. What else can we put? What would you put? We've got dispute, fraud. Oh, wait, retail. We didn't even think about retail. Remember we said if you worked at Walmart, you were a cashier at Walmart, relevant experience. So let's actually put that we've got retail support experience. Okay. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different words, plus these two up here if we count those, okay? So you can add additional things here if you want to put if you just wanted to put that sales or you wanted to add something like customer experience. But now we've got a fully filled out, fully functional knowledge area section. We have more than 10 hot words at this point. So our resume is going to be at the top of the stack. Our resume has just beat the applicant tracking system. This is how you hack your way into a job. You just have to know what you did at the job and you have to know how to connect it to the job that you're applying for, right? Okay, so let's say when it comes to job titles, maybe you didn't work as a chargeback specialist. Maybe you worked as a lead cashier. Maybe you worked as a claims investigator. If you didn't directly touch those disputes, it's not a big deal because you can be recognized for quickly resolving those investigations or helping to mitigate dispute investigations. Recognized for assisting with dispute mitigation. So you may not have handled the dispute. dispute. Maybe you were the person that gathered the paperwork. If your boss said, hey, I got a dispute I need to handle. Can you go and get me this person's personal information and show us what time they filed the dispute and show us what time they made the transaction and show us what card they used to pay for this transaction, right? So it's all about wording what you did. So you assisted with the dispute mitigation you that resulted in a 25% reduction in fraudulent disputes and an increase in dispute resolutions. Well, if a recruiter reads this or if a hiring manager reads this, you're going to look like a rock star. You're going to look like you really know what you're talking about. And guess what? You were the person working the cash register at McDonald's. You were the lead cashier and your boss just tapped you on the shoulder occasionally to ask you to give you, uh, you know, something that to give you a report from the transactions that day and you providing that report of the transactions, you are assisting with the dispute mitigation process. See how that works? So now let's go ahead and look into the other job positions because I got to get through these. A lot of you, now that you have this resume in your portal, you can go ahead and submit it. Remember that resume is already filled out for you. Let's go ahead and look at the next job, Task Rabbit. You've all heard of TaskRabbit, fun company. If you need something done around your house, building a bookcase or putting up shelves, um, TaskRabbit is where you could go to find those contractors to do those little small household jobs. So 
They are hiring for a people operations specialist. Okay. Now, a lot of you may be saying, Jazzy, I don't know if I had that experience. And I would say, yes, you do. Because with this job, it's very data driven. Okay. Data entry, right? So you're going to be documenting things um, related to employee changes, including onboarding. That's when an employee starts, when you're putting their system and the information. Um, offboarding is when an employee leaves the company. You would put their termination date, or maybe you would put the day that they resigned. And any personnel changes, you know, this could be where somebody got married, now their last name changed. So now you're updating their last name in the system. Okay. So nothing too crazy. Most of you have already done this. Now it's going to be a bonus if you've got payroll and benefit experience, but you don't need that experience because when we look down here, it says the area of expertise they're looking for is somebody that's just simply got one year, one to three years of support role experience. Um, if you've got processing payroll experience, that's again, a plus, but it is not a deal breaker. Many of you already have that Google suite experience, whether it's working, um, in Google sheets, Google doc, that sort of stuff. Okay. So again, the compensation is going to be pretty darn high up to $90,000 a year. That's $45 per hour. Okay. And out the gate, even if you were someone that had absolutely no experience, you're still looking at making 65,000 per year, which is a little over $32 per hour. So these are very, very high paying jobs, okay? And they also come with additional things like instead of just getting base pay, you're also gonna get um, the company bonuses. Now, I'm not sure if these are annual bonuses, um, but there may be room for sign-on bonuses, things of that nature. So you want to make sure you ask the recruiter about that. And plus, they've got really, really great benefits out there, okay? So let me know if you've got any questions about this particular position. Sorry, I had to take a little drink there. And the next position that we've got... It's going to be for Warner Brothers, okay? As we've mentioned before, this particular job, this is going to be a customer experience tech, okay? Now, I want to point out that this is also remote in California, New York, Florida, Tennessee, Georgia, and Virginia, okay? With this job, you're going to pretty much work support tickets, tickets that have been escalated from tier one and tier two. So this is not you talking on uh, the phone. This is you going through tickets um, related to the customer experience. Are certain customers generally having the same issue? Are there bugs that are happening on this platform? You know, when people are watching TV, are they reporting the same kind of issues? Like maybe they can't log into their account or maybe certain TV shows won't play when they go to that TV show. So what are they ultimately documenting? Um, so yeah, you're going to be the person that's going through and, you know, resolving these claims. Okay. So for here, it says you're a key member of the customer experience team. That's what CS stands for. Um, you're going to provide support for inquiries that can't be solved by tier one and tier two, that sort of stuff. So anybody that's got any type of technical support experience, whether you worked at like Comcast, maybe AT&T, those sorts of companies, this is going to be a natural progression for you. But what's cool is that in this position, it starts at 6 p.m. Um, and that's kind of the coverage they're looking for, like the evening overnight coverage, Sunday through Thursday. Okay. So if you've got any type of customer service experience, this is going to be perfect. B2C brand would be like you working for a Comcast, anything like that. Um, and you get a plus if you've got experience using any type of app, such as Apple TV, Roku, iOS devices, Android TV, all that good stuff. Okay. Now, Jazzy, how much do they pay? They pay up to 84,000. Okay. Somewhere around $42 per hour. And you also get the bonuses. You also get short and long-term incentives. Okay. So again, all of these are in your resume portal right now. All of these resumes have been done for you. And you guys have no excuse not to be getting paid 
a whole lot of money, okay? We just did the resume demonstration. The full resumes are already out there in your portal. So let me know if you've got any questions at all. I'm very, very excited for those of you that have been getting these jobs. Y'all just make mama so proud. So thank you for sharing when you get the job and when you use these resume templates and how the interview kits are helping you. So if these are the type of videos that you wanna see more of, um, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to see more resume demonstrations, give this video a big thumbs up, okay? So until the next time, I will see you good people. Happy hunting. I'll talk to you later. Bye.